All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yashar Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word, in all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Baha Shem is in the name. Rakah is spirit. Kodash is holy. Akyam is brothers. Akwath is sisters. Shalawam means peace. And Yashar Allah is Israel in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. All right, this is Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. And it reads, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. In the NLT, it reads, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 20 years. Now, I want to go into this through the spirit and go into a few articles on aging. All right, because basically what the Lord did was he put a cap on our life as uh, as humans, if you will, as being uh, mortals in the flesh. All right. The original intent was for Israelites in particular to live forever. All right. But because of our disobedience, the Lord put a cap on our lifespan. All right. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter two. And I'm going to jump down to verse 22. As for the mysteries of the Most High, they knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for blameless souls. For the Most High created man to be immortal. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. And they that do hold of his side do find it. All right. So when you deal with Adam's disobedience. All right. That spent or, or put the uh, sons of God into this chain or these chains of darkness. All right. Which are these bodies which are not only subject to sin, but there's a cap on the lifespan. All right. And I want to go into the uh, the science, if you will, on aging. All right. All right. Now, this is science online. And uh, it says aging and tolomere length quantification. It said aging is a time dependent decline of the body's functional capabilities and is an inevitable course of life, as shown in the image below extracted from Wall Street Journal. The rate of aging, though, is highly variable among individuals. When evaluating health status, the virtual biological age and actual chronological age are both important. For this reason, scientists have long searched for reliable biomarkers of aging to determine biological age. Currently, there is no well-accepted aging biomarker that has been identified. Now, what I want to show, all right, is this diagram. All right, because basically it shows that this is how the aging process works. You know, there's these caps on the chromosomes. All right. And when those caps degrade, eventually the cells lose their ability to replicate. And through that process, people begin to age and, and eventually begin to die out. All right. And this just gives you a visual of the coverings, the tolomers, if you will, of um, of the capsules that are put on the chromosomes. And when these degrade, all right, people begin the death process. All right. And as people get older. As it shows in the diagram, those tolomers get smaller and smaller until there's no defense and there's no ability for the cells to replicate. Now, this is the Lord's doing. All right. The, the study shows that the average lifespan of a person all right, at the most is 120 years. All right. There was reported to be a one woman who lived up to 122. All right. But that is the average. All right. The cap is at 120. And we know that through the spirit and power. Of Yahweh Bashimah Shah first and foremost. All right. Now, the reason I want to point to this is because you know you have a lot of people, all right, who look at the scriptures um, when they discuss immortality and immortal life, and they look at these things as beyond the imagination. But when you look at the biology of aging, you know, all the Lord really has to do is to uh is to make sure those or or um how shall I say this? All the Lord would really have to do at the simplest form, all right, is allow those tolomer capsules on the chromosomes to not degrade. And this is how we understand that this is the spirit of the heavenly father 
who has created our body as a machine. And he's put that cap on this machine so that it can't go past a fur, uh, that 120 year cap. OK, now we understand through the spirit that the Lord is going to give us renewed bodies. All right. And these bodies are going to be extra terrestrial, meaning it can dwell in the terrestrial, but it's, it also has extra capabilities outside of the terrestrial. All right. Now, I want to go into this next article. Really quick. And it's uh, blog dot insider tracker and Lord willing, I'll be able to put this. Uh, these two articles in the uh, description. All right. So the Q&A, it says how Harvard's David Sinclair is fighting aging and how you can, too. Now, basically, this is a Harvard scientist and he his approach is that aging is a disease. Now, we understand that ultimately it's a cap that the Lord has put on us as a punishment. OK, beginning with the Israelites, because the Israelites were designed to live forever. All right. Now, this is Psalms. Chapter 82. And I'm going to jump down to verse six and it reads, I've said you are gods and all of you are children of the most high, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now, when we go into the NLT on this. It reads. I say you are gods, you are all children of the most high, but you will die like mere mortals and fall like every other ruler. All right. And this is the cap that the Lord placed on us. Now, when you look at science and how they're trying to get around this, all right, they're fighting Esau. All right. is fighting for immortality, but he's trying to go around the heavenly father. So he's looking at the chromosomes. He's looking at the Ptolemers and he's going into what they call life sciences to try to find a way to extend their lifespan and at the same time, extend their rulership because that's their desire. All right. To pass on this, uh, this rulership from generation to generation and to and, and to basically rule forever. Well, the Lord promised that to Jacob. All right. And the blessing of Jacob is going to be a bio, uh, is going to be a natural one, a biological one, not some synthetic um, GMO uh, sense of uh, immortality. OK, so I want to go to the point here. All right, it says. Right here. It says people tend to think of aging as something that is chronological and inevitable. How do you define it? He says as a science, as a scientific definition, I'm proposing that aging is a loss of information. The information that keeps our cells healthy, the information that tells the cells which genes to read throughout our lives. And aging is a manifestation of cells losing their ability to read the right genes at the right time which leads to cells losing their identity and tissues falling. So this is the cap that the Heavenly Father put on humanity, all right, beginning with the sons of God. All right, and this is why in the, uh, in the kingdom, the Israelites are going to live forever. And I want to point this out because, again, when you look at the science and you look at what Esau has found out through the spirit, this is not a, a, a hard thing for the Lord to do. To allow man to live forever is not a hard thing for the Lord to do, especially when you look at the science. Now, Esau's approach to it is, is from the left hand because he wants to use the technology of this world to extend the lifespan of himself, first and foremost. Because when you think about what he's trying to do, he's trying to extend the life by doing what he's trying to do with the uh, chromosomes. But that's going to be a, a process or, or a procedure that's so expensive that the average person is not going to be able to afford to extend their life which by default gives him the advantage to have rulership and dominion. That's the mindset of Esau Edom. Whereas the Lord is going to set up a nation which will live forever, all right, naturally, without the help of technology. And not only are they going to be able to live forever, but they're going to be a righteous nation of people, which are the Israelites, which are us, Lord willing, we be a part of that elect number. And that righteous rulership is going to allow humanity in itself to prosper, the world is not going to prosper with Edomites living forever, but this is their approach. But when you look at the science, when you look at the dilemma. All right, you can see that it's not a hard thing for the Heavenly Father to allow man to live forever. All right. Concerning the Israelites. And I want to make that point clear. All right. Continuing. It says this. 
This isn't how aging is defined from a regulatory perspective, though, right? Says the regulatory definition currently is that aging is something different than a disease. The reason is that even though it satisfies the criteria of a disease, which is a decline in function over time leading to death, aging is separated because it happens to more than 50 percent of us. And I argue that just because aging happens to more than half of us is no reason to not con include it as a disease. And basically it. In a sense, it is because the Lord put that cap on us. And this is how that cap plays out. The Lord said we will no long, we would not live longer than 120 years. And this is how that process works. All right. The cell's ability to replicate. All right. To read information, to pass information along degrades over time. And then you, your body eventually becomes non-functional and you die. All right. Your spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father and your flesh goes back to the earth, which uh, which it comes from. Now, in the kingdom of heaven, these things are not a hard problem for the Lord to solve because you have people who look at the Lord talking about. Let's get it. Let's get examples. You have the Lord talking about immortality and you have the, the world. All right. Looking at that as a problem, as something that that is impossible. All right. So let's get. And this is a beautiful point. Let's get this point right here. Let's get Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And it reads, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is the most high. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now, I want to point this out that this was an Israelite talking to Yahweh Shai, and he's asking, how does he uh, gain the eternal life? All right. And the Lord is saying, keep the commandments because the commandments ultimately lead unto life. Now, the Lord ultimately put a cap on us, but eventually the inheritance of eternal life will be given to the Israelites because that is an inheritance. All right. I want to get another example. All right. Now, this is Mark 10 and 17. All right. And it reads. And when he go and he, when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Because understand that eternal life is an inheritance that was given unto the Israelites. It wasn't given unto everyone. It was given unto the uh, the Israelites. All right. The Lord promised that for the nation of Israel. All right. Let's get the promise. OK. This is Isaiah. Twenty five. And eight, he will swallow up death in victory and the Lord, Yahweh by Shemal Shai, will wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken it. So when you go into the New Testament and death is being swallowed in victory. That goes with the Israelites. That's an inheritance. Now, I wanted to highlight how the science is not a hard problem for the Lord to solve. Nothing is too hard for the Heavenly Father. But I also want to point out that this is an inheritance that is given unto Yahweh Bashim Shai's people, which is Yashar Allah, the Israelites. Not just eternal life, but rulership under Yahweh Shai. All right, real quick. This is Psalms chapter 84. You know what? It's like you. This is Psalm chapter 80. 81. Uh, it's like you. And uh, verse 12. You know what? Let's start at 10. I'm the Lord, thy power, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts lust and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. 
but their time should have endured forever. Our time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and without honey and with honey out of the rock shall I have satisfied thee. I want to also get this. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 37 and verse 25. The days of the life of man may be numbered, but the days of Israel are innumerable. All right. Because that eternal life is an inheritance that is given unto the nation of Israel. All right. Now, when you look at the science, it's not hard for the Lord to do that. But when you understand the promises made to the nation of Israel, the Lord is going to swallow up death and victory for them. Lord, will we be a part of that number on the first fruits? All right. Now, I want to get eternal. All right. It says without beginning and end, that which has always been and always will be, it says without beginning, it says this, this is the point without end, never to cease everlasting. So the, when the Lord is talking about eternal life, all right, this isn't just a similitude. The Lord is literally talking about the ability for the Israelites, beginning with the elect to live forever. That is the, the promise. That is the good news that the Lord has promised the nation of Israel. And it may seem impossible to the natural man in this world. But when you look at the science, this ain't a hard thing. Esau right now is trying and striving to get eternal life through science, through the left hand energy. Nobody's calling him crazy. Yet through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Shai, we understand that these things are going to be done to the amazement of of those who believe, but most importantly, those who don't believe. All right. This is Habakkuk chapter one and verse five. Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. So the Lord has told us about eternal life, immortality. All right. The ability to live forever. And most people don't believe it, though it be told to them. But in that day, they're going to regard and wonder marvelously. All right. And the heathens are going to say this. All right. Psalms 126. And three. And it reads, the Lord had, you know what? Let me start at one. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. Why? Because not only is the Lord going to deliver us as a nation of people, beginning with the elect, but he's going to grant our nation eternal life. The ability to not die. And it's hard to fathom in the natural concerning the natural man. But these things are not hard for the Heavenly Father, especially when you look at the science. This is not a hard thing. The Lord allowing man to live forever. Spiritual power. The, that's not a hard thing for the Heavenly Father. All of these things are hard to uh, comprehend for the natural man because they lack faith. But this is the beauty of the scriptures. All right. That the Lord said that these things are going to come to pass. And now we're living in a time where the science is starting to starting to mention certain things that they have to go back to the scriptures to understand. Why is the average lifespan at the most 120 years? Because the Lord said it. And now we're coming into a time where the Lord is beginning to raise up his people beginning with the remnant mentally and spiritually first but eventually it's going to physically manifest because the physical manifestation of the sons of god is literally going to be immortality to live forever in rulership under yahweh shai and this is why balaam said let my latter end be like theirs all right this is why balaam said this numbers 23 and 10 who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. So what he saw was so miraculous, he was willing to go through everything that Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are going through now just to be in a position to inherit what the Israelites will inherit at the end of this. And a part of that is eternal life, the ability to live forever. All right. This is the beauty of the scriptures, man. All right. Let's get uh, let's get Paul. This is first Corinthians chapter 15 
All right, in 52, in a moment, you know what, man? This is 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. That's that's plain, all right? Verse 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. All right, so the Lord's going to make us perfect. And through us being made perfect, meaning we physically don't have the ability to sin. The wages of sin being death. If we are perfect in the law, we will live forever. And when you look at the science through the spirit, it's not a hard thing for the Heavenly Father to do. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquas, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.